Hey everyone, my name is Ford from NorCal Thrills, and today I'm bringing you an update from Six Flags Discovery Kingdom for August 1st, 2021. It definitely has been a while since I've been at the park, but luckily there wasn't quite as much excitement and as many changes as there were last time. But don't let that fool you, since there was still a lot different. Today we'll start off with some more ride reopenings as Discovery Kingdom continues to staff up, then we'll move over to ride construction and find out what's going on with some of the closed or under construction rides at the park. And finally, we'll finish the update off with some of the other small changes in the park. So without any more buildup, let's get started. After a rough couple of months for rides, they're finally starting to reopen at the park as it presumably continues to increase staffing. The bumper cars are thrilling guests again. Boomerang's reopening adds a desperately needed draw to the rear of the park. Maybe the most exciting reopening was catching Whitewater Safari testing. It didn't operate for guests when I was there, but allegedly did a couple days later. This ride hasn't been running since summer of 2019 and is always a crowd pleaser, especially on a hot summer day. Even the kids' rides were getting into the spirit. Tava's Jungle Land had most of its rides running, as did the other two kids' areas, Seaside Junction and Looney Tunes Seaport. That's the first time since reopening I've seen all three operating at the same time. Props to Six Flags Discovery Kingdom for continuing to reopen their closed rides, and I hope to keep seeing a mostly open park on my next visits. Even though most of the rides at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom are open, there are a handful that aren't quite open yet or are in the active process of construction or deconstruction, so let's take a look at those ones. And we'll start with Sidewinder Safari. At first glance, panning through the area, we see no progress, like usual. But when we look a little closer, we can see Odin's Snack Shack's sign taken down and the back torn out of the stand. This is the first visible sign of progress at the site in a while. Does this mean anything for Sidewinder Safari? We'll wait and see, but it's good to see something, anything happening. But that wasn't the only surprise this visit. If we take a look at the former Sky Coaster site, we can see this interesting little redevelopment sign hung on the station. We also see the same sign for the first time in front of Tasmanian Devil. It's an interesting sign, but I'd temper your expectations. I don't expect to see replacements for a while with capital expenditures lower in the post-COVID era. Still good to see them acknowledging that they don't plan to just let these rides sit forever, though. Moving over to DC, Harley remains as closed as ever. There haven't been any signs of removal or anything beyond how it just normally sits. Flash, the other closed ride in the area, has had its mask rest area removed, and its train off the track. Hopefully, that means that the ride is just getting refurbished and isn't too far away from reopening. Now that we've covered some closed rides and rides under construction, let's move to a handful of miscellaneous updates. A handful more of the stores and restaurants that were closed are starting to reopen, like Coaster Candy and California Crepes. And just in time, every restaurant was packed full for lunch today. The Shark Aquarium finally reopened. It was in better shape than I remember from before the pandemic, and it was good to go face to face with these incredible animals again. Like the park sometimes does, outside food trucks were back on site serving guests. As of August 1st, Discovery Kingdom featured an amended mask policy stating that masks were not required in the park, whereas unvaccinated guests were encouraged to wear them. In addition to the mask policy change, the temperature checks were gone from the front of the park and the old metal detectors were replaced with the fantastic new ones that the park started using during the pandemic. Great move, Six Flags. These ones are so much less invasive. The map at the entrance of the park was updated. This new map is the one I mentioned in the last update that was missing several of the rides that are now marked for removal or already removed. And now we'll finish this update, like we always do, with some animal and ride footage. So 
so that'll wrap up our update for the day. We covered some ride reopenings, ride removals, and construction, as well as some extra small items. It is great to see Discovery Kingdom start to get back to full strength after such a long period, and I look forward to seeing what the park does for Halloween and Christmas this year. My next visit to the park will be in the middle of September. But now you're all caught up on the happenings at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. To see more pictures and details from my trip, visit the written update at the link in the description.